tell you when's the last time I got so serious about something like this Slapshot remake discussion. And we've had some really good ones coming in here. Jeff in Winnipeg, Camilla says the Baldwin brothers for the Hansons. Wayne and Victoria agrees with my Zach Galifianakis as Denny Lemieux. Denny Lemieux, continue on, I say so. Who would be Dickie Dunn? I feel like Elliot Friedman should play Dickie Dunn. But I think that Billy Bob Thornton is a slam dunk as Reg Dunlop because this is a very, very important role. This would be the role that might define Billy Bob Thornton's career. It's the role. It's the role. And I will go along with Billy Bob Thornton as Reg Dunlop. That's how big of a fan I am of his that? and of Reg Dunlop's, and nobody has come close to <clears throat> anybody else. Somebody mentioned Steve Carell. Steve Carell maybe is Jim Carr. I like it. Yeah. I like he it. Could, he could be Jim Carr. That works for me. Hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> the guy whose idea this was in the first place, Robin Wildey, he's watching in PA. He says Liam Neeson as Joe McGrath. Liam Neeson's way too cool to play Joe McGrath. Way too cool. Somebody hey! mentioned. John in Winnipeg. John Ohm. Um, Danny DeVito. Yeah. As Joe McGrath. Yeah. Slam dunk. Perfect. Oh, how about that? Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. It's like Ravine, the famed illusionist. He would hypnotize the whole crowd. My dad always told this joke. He goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> Ravine was uh, performing at the center of the arts. He had the whole room hypnotized. And he said, the next thing I say, you will all do. And he got tripped up, tangled on his mic cord and tripped and went, crap. Took him two weeks to get the smell up. This is the Rod Peterson Show. That's a true story. Welcome, everybody, to the RP Show. Hi. Brand new week, same old grind. And welcome to episode number 1,203. That's right, 1,203 episodes. They've allowed us on the air. We've fooled them on Game Plus Television and WQEE Radio in Atlanta and the streams. I'm here in the somewhat sweltering South Florida studios. It's two hours of the best sports talk coming up live. Our guests include Zig Fracassi from Sirius XM NFL Radio and from Sports Grid TV, Joe Madden. She is the, one of the most popular sports betting people out there right now. Male or female, Joe Madden will join us an hour or two from Sports Grid. Let's bring in the Moose now. He's in the Toronto studio. And listen up, Toronto. We're going to be opening with them right away here. Moose in the quick six. As a matter of fact, to get this out of the way, Director Jordan, can you hit the quick six? Joe, one, two, just now, so you hit. <clears throat> okay. Is there a doctor in the house or a nurse <laughs> or maybe Moose, you can help me with this, but I don't know with dehydration, I don't know too much about it. And I know you're going to ask me about my weekend in a second, so I'll just go first and say we had the tailgate party on Saturday for the Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay Lightning. It was great. That's one thing. But then on Sunday, I went to Cardinal Gibbons High School, my good friend, Matt Dubuck, is the head coach there. He said, come on down and watch our seven-on-seven. Seven. Give me your thoughts. And it was hot. It was a day so hot it would make the devil cry. Moose. And I was standing in the bathroom using the facilities, and on the wall it had a level of dehydration. And it had the colors of, from clear to, like, orange and everything in between. Basically saying, if what's coming out of you matches this, if it's clear, you're good. Uh, it, but if it's down here in, like, neon orange... Yep. You're in big trouble. And I was like, ah, in trouble of what? What could possibly happen if you're too dehydrated? I don't know, but I might be at that level today. Do, is if there's a doctor or a nurse or somebody that would, what would happen if you're severely dehydrated? Could you die? I don't know. 
Probably. I don't know about being dehydrated for a day. I think you can go a number of days without drinking or eating. I don't, don't, I'm not a doctor, so don't <laughs> quote me on that, <laughs> on that. But are you feeling lightheaded? Because it's, it's definitely not a good sign. Yeah. It's not a good sign if you're peeing uh, antifreeze, you know, into the urinal or into the toilet. That's not a good thing. Yeah, so, so hang another, in there. It was another, another hot one today is my point. So I prefaced the moose before we went to air. You might have to take over today, but I've crushed two Gatorade now. And I think summer's hit. It's March the 18th and it's humid and it's hot. And I know, I know nobody cares but me, but I got to start taking care of myself a little better. All right, can you hit the quick six show horn again, Jordan? I know you hit it once, but can you hit it twice? That's hot. Because you're just so nice. We open every Monday with the big story. Everybody's got in and they've got settled here, Moose. And my big story is this, and it may surprise you. Joey Votto found the swing he wanted and capitalized. The Toronto product homered on his first at bat. As a Toronto Blue Jay in a 5-5 spring training tie against the Phillies on Sunday, Votto joined the Jays on a minor league deal last week with an invite to spring training after 17 years with Cincinnati. He was a six-time All-Star with the Reds and named NL MVP in 2010. That's my big story, and I'm wondering if it's registered with any of your viewers. We're very big in Ohio on the Buckeye cable system. They carry Game Plus. We have a lot of fans. I get mail from people there from the three C's, Cincinnati, Columbus. There's my Cleveland. So everybody knows Joey Votto, and I think it's a hell of a story. And while we're not the baseball show, I'm kind of wondering, it's, it, it's the best story in spring training for the Blue Jays. I would say one of the best in spring training of all of Major League Baseball, other than Shohei getting married. That was my big story coming out of the weekend. How about you? I think it's a great story. Um, my big story was was hockey. I spent a lot of time watching hockey, which was really fun. But on the Joey Votto thing, I think it's really interesting because Joey Votto is a feel-good story right now for the Toronto Blue Jays and in Major League Baseball. I, I kind of, no, he's not Tom Brady, but I kind of equate it the same way. Tom Brady's coming up and he's doing really great and with the New England and they're winning all these Super Bowls. And I didn't really much care for them. You know, I kind of wanted somebody else to win. But as Tom got older, and the adversity started to set in, and everybody started saying he was done. He couldn't do it. That's when I really became a Brady fan, you know, to see if he can, you know, overcome age and stick it to all the naysayers, and he did win late. Same thing with Joey Votto now in his 40s. I'm kind of like, come on, man. Like, I hope he can do this, because nobody else thinks he can. Nobody took a chance to sign him. It's a wonderful story, and if the Jays can get a good bat that produces at a relatively low cost, that's going to be a big win. For the people far more averse than baseball than us, um, and maybe we'll have to bring a Rash Madani in later this week, but, you know, what is your expectation of Joey Votto this year for the Toronto Blue Jays? As I mentioned, he's 46-time All-Star, and he could have hung him up. My God, God knows he's made enough money, but he wanted to keep playing. And his quote was, I wanted to play for this team since I was wearing a bib. So that is just a fantastic story. Uh, the Sober Carpenter text line is open, 902-518-3033. Sober Carpenter, non-alcoholic craft beers. Ask for them by name, where you purchase your beer, wine, and spirits. Ryan in Oshawa, Ontario writes in, and he says, Glad I found you on YouTube. Didn't know you existed. Thank you for your show. That is Ryan in Oshawa. And to be honest, I just want to tell everybody, please... Come in here and just settle in and have funny and uh, have fun and expect to have fun for the next two hours because we don't take ourselves too seriously. There's a lot of crap going on in the world, but not here. So come on in and put a smile on. Hopefully it makes you feel good. That's what we want to do. And Darren often says people don't, they very rarely come out and say something nice or float a compliment in today's world. So thank you, Ryan Syme in Oshawa, Ontario, for the nice words. So, moving on to point two, and this is my big story. It's NHL leftovers coming out of the weekend. I'll just mention one game. Tyler Toffoli scored twice and added an assist, leading the Winnipeg Jets past the Columbus Blue Jackets 6-1 on Sunday. Nikolai Ehlers had a goal and a helper, and Kyle Connor, Logan Stanley, and Vladislav Nemestikov also scored. Sean Monaghan added two assists, and Connor Hellebuck stopped 30 for the Jets, who pulled even with the Stars and Avs atop the Central Division. Now, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I'm, I hope you will. 
But I would say now is the time where you can start to flip-flop on nightly results, panic if you must. I'll give you a good example. The Florida Panthers fans here are very upset the team's lost two in a row, and I'll get into that in a second. But like the Islanders have lost, I think it's four in a row now, and people are writing them off. You go on a five, six, seven game run, win or lose, November, December, January, I'm not getting that wound up about it. But now, I can mm -hmm. see why you would, right? Because you're tuning up. You're tuning up. You should be tuning up. That's my net. Now is where I pay far more attention. How about you? Yeah, it is. And the games mean so, they feel like they mean so much more. Panthers got knocked out of first overall, and I think Boston overtook them. But you know, Florida's still got a game or two in hand there. No big deal. I love the Central, how they're all tied. I think Winnipeg's got a little bit of the inside track because I think they've got a game or two in hand. But these games are all great. And for me, I go back to Saturday night. I watched, you know, a lot of hockey Saturday during the day. But, you know, I really settled in for Hockey Night in Canada. I had the living room and the TV to myself. It was awesome. And, you know, that Leafs and Hurricanes game was exactly what you want. Kind of a playoff game. And Carolina didn't go down, scored two late goals. And, yeah, they won in a shootout. But that was a heavyweight game back and forth. And then the, the night game, Colorado and Edmonton, another heavyweight tilt that the Avs won in overtime. So all these games, you're starting to get the best out of teams. And it makes it so much fun to watch. That's what I'm saying. Now, yeah, um, when people were asking my thoughts all year, it's like it, not, nothing to worry about now for the most part, but now it is. Kevin, the medium's checked in from Alberta. He says, good morning, RP peeps from beautiful Airdrie, Alberta, expecting 45 centimeters of snow this week. So stop with the, oh, it's too hot. That wasn't really what I was saying. <laughs> what I was saying was I may suffer from severe dehydration and what comes along with that. And my guy, John Gloa, in Saskatoon, former producer of ours, Writes that he says problems with blood pressure, heart rate, and body temperature. Severe dehydration can also cause weakness or confusion. In extreme cases, it can lead to kidney damage, brain damage, and even death. <laughs> well, no wonder they were so worked up in the bathroom at Cardinal Gibbons with that sign on the wall. Anyways, I'm taking care of myself. That's all that I'm saying. I don't know that Good. I'll ever move to the Fahrenheit scale. It's like 31 degrees Celsius here right now today. And, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I do love it. John goes on to say, if you do die from dehydration, can I have your home studio? You sure can. Now, trust me, everybody, hold on to your bingo cards. We're going to get to basketball, NFL, maybe a little CFL if the viewers want, Raptors. World Women's Curling, we got a lot to get to. But I just want to say two things popping into my mind. Number one, the Flames. You know my friend Vaughn, who, because the Flames won Thursday night, he said, are you going to have Flames Friday? No. <laughs> You're going to miss the playoffs, bro. And then Saturday night, they beat Montreal. And I thought, you guys should be cheering for the Flames to lose, really. But then I thought, you know what? Who the hell are we to tell anybody how to cheer at all? If you want to cheer for your team, do it. That's, you know, that's one thing. Flames aren't going to make the playoffs, and that sucks. But to the Panthers here, we had a tailgate party on Saturday, and it was fun before the Tampa Bay Florida game. I have fans of both teams in my face saying that we favor the other team on our podcast, which just made me laugh because I'm like, you're all watching. That is the main thing. But after the Lightning came out and won 5-3, Darren, Saturday in the Battle of Florida, Somebody actually said this to me. God bless her, Pete Pickenheart. She goes, do you think the Panthers are actually throwing games right now? Because they lost in Carolina Thursday and then lost to Tampa Saturday. She's like, do you think they don't want to win the President's Trophy because it's a jinx and they're purposely trying to lose? How do you answer that? Because you don't want to make her feel this big. But I just said to her, I appreciate the question. But nobody, no team has ever won every game. No team. Right, Darren? We're pretty sure about that. No team has gone 82 and 0. So no. just chill. But they've lost two in a row and they're panicking and 
everybody is giving their thoughts on what's wrong with the Panthers, and I'm like, oh, man, it is a lot. So I had to back away from the social media. I put that in my uh, 10 things column on Sunday. I said, if you have a problem and you're getting bothered by what you see on social media, get off social media. You're welcome. But they lose two in a row, and people are panicking, man. I, I don't think if you're the Florida Panthers right now, you have, you have a lot to worry about that you've lost two in a row. Back to this time of year. Uh, yeah, what do you say? No. What do we used to say? The check engine light's on. You might want to pull over next gas station, have a look under the hood, right? Yeah, and it's okay to stop and take a look. This is the, I don't want to say this is, you know, it's not a practice lap if you want to use the car terminology in the race car. But these are the final tune-ups for teams that, you know, especially like Florida, Boston that are in the playoffs and going to be in the playoffs. This is a tune-up. And it's not that the games don't matter. You're never trying to lose. You always want to win. But it's better to sort out the issues now than try and sort them out when all the marbles are in the middle of the table and all your chips are in, in the playoffs. So better to deal with it now. And, hey, most of our viewers on the poll said that They'd rather see, they'd rather your team not win the President's Trophy because of the jinx that comes along with it, if you believe in that sort of thing. So it's not a bad thing if you drop a couple here, but you need to make sure that the process continues to move forward. So the Panthers will be fine. They were just on a really great stretch of games, and a couple of losses won't set them back too far. Well, no, it's like uh, right now you want to be playing your best. You always do, but you want to stay healthy now because you can't overcome an injury before playoff time now, you're still working on chemistry. Look at here. Kyle Pozo's here. Vladimir Tarasenko's here. They're all newcomers, right? So it's, you want to get that behind you heading into the playoffs. Losing a couple is not the end of the world. That's our opinion. I mean, this morning, by the way, uh, Randy in Winnipeg writes in, he says the Capitals have put themselves back in it. And Carolina's looking good with their additions. Heard this morning on the radio. I always listen to NHL radio because I love it so much. They said Spencer Carberry is the reason the Washington Capitals have not been eliminated yet. And that's coaching, which got me thinking, too. uh, If the team's underperforming, who's going to get fired? The coach. If the team's overachieving, who should get the credit? The coach. They rarely do, but... I think if you stopped 100 people on the street in Canada and asked them who's the head coach of the Washington Capitals, 98 of them couldn't have given you an answer. I'm not joking. Uh, by know. the way, there are only two games only two games in the NHL tonight, Washington at Calgary and uh, Buffalo at Seattle. We'll talk a little bit more about those games later. We're going to pause. When we come back, there's a lot of NFL news. There's some CFL news. And uh, March Madness is here. That has to do with our poll. So sit tight. Zig Fricasse and Joe Madden are on the way. We'll be right back on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB.
Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be here by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, everybody. Reward your love of movies and sign up for Landmark Extras today for free. Get more of what you love. Free movies and concession items, plus invitations to exclusive screenings, special events, and more. Three programs to choose from. Go to LandmarkCinemas.com right now for details. Can we bring the moose in? 902-518-3033. Uh, just some leftovers from the last segment, moose, from the viewers. Rainmaker YYC, that's Calgary, watching on YouTube, writes in and he says, the Canucks will take the cup. Hashtag mediocre for life. I have the sense he's talking about the flames. Terry in Calgary, Terry the lawyer, Writes there and he says, the Panthers outshot the Bolts 50 to 19 and lost 5 3 on Saturday. So, what he's saying is, no need to panic for the Panthers. But here's the, here's the thing in America, Terry, if you spend any time, they don't look at the stats. Did you win or did you lose? No excuses. I'm not sure that's right, but that's the way that it is. You know what I mean, Darren? And I don't know if it's just hockey. I think that's. It's a societal thing here. Are you a winner or are you a loser? End of story. I don't want to see the stats. I don't want to see the shots. I don't want to see the attendance. Did you win or did you lose? Is that a good or bad way to be? I'm not sure. Um, it's, it's, it's an okay. It's good. I'm, I'm okay with it. Did you win or did you lose? I mean, yeah, you have to look at the story sometimes. Again, I'm, it, I'm always, it's not black and white. It's and, not or. It can be both. But there's nothing wrong with that because at the end of the day, um, for the most part, especially in sports, we're in a results-based business. Wins matter. So did you win or did you lose? I agree. Terry gets it. He's a lawyer. He's a black and white kind of guy. I know him. He came to our watch party at the Shark Club where we watched CFL. But that kind of, I'm not saying he is this, but that sounds like the yeah, but crowd. You lost 5-3. Yeah, but we outshot him 50-19. to 19. Yeah, but you lost. You know what I mean? I was a little upset because Bob did not have a good game. Um, I'm just, I'm a goalie guy, and Sergei Bobrovsky did not have a good game. And let's remember, remember the last time these two teams played was in Tampa. We were there with the Cats and Bolts podcast and the Lightning won, uh, Panthers won 9-2, and it wasn't even a game. This one was similar to that. Um, get to more of your comments in a sec. Uh, John in Edmonton says, where do you think the Arizona Coyotes are going to move to? Is Quebec City a possibility? But then again, Gary Bettman doesn't like Canada. 
Uh, that's not what I want to talk about right now. I appreciate you throwing the topic out, John, but that's not, this is our time. And I would suggest they're not going to Quebec City. It'll be Houston, it'll be Utah, Atlanta. They'll be staying in America. David has showed up from Winnipeg, David number one, and says, good morning, Rod and Moose, just so you know. Winnipeg is alive and well. March Madness is here. Defending champion Connecticut, along with Houston, Purdue, and North Carolina are the top seeds in a March Madness bracket that started going haywire even before the pairings came out Sunday night. Of the four top seeds, only UConn, that's University of Connecticut, <clears throat> not the Canadian Territory, UConn. They're the only one of the top seeds going into the tournament coming off a win. That played into the Huskies receiving the number one overall spot. The other three top seeds lost in their conference tournaments. I'll be honest with you, I'm just almost three years here getting a handle on college football. Don't even ask me to get a handle on NCAA college basketball. Men's, women's, whatever. But the poll question today has to do with that. It's brought to you by our friends at uh, Key Yorkton Kia. Unleash the future. Kia EV6 GT at Key Yorkton Kia, where performance and innovation go hand in hand. Go to keyyorktonkia.com or call 306-783-2772 for more information. The 23 Kia EV6 GT, movement that inspires. Uh, the question is, will you fill out a March Madness bracket? It's a yes or no question. <clears throat> the answer for me will be yes. The answer for Darren will be yes, because he won a bracket. I'll speak for you, Darren. You won a bracket a couple years ago. It was a couple grand U.S., right? Well, you were like, you and me were the only Canadians in it, and you won the darn thing. It'll be yes for you, right? I'll be, I'm just waiting for my invite from, from Dan and the boys at the Enterprise Sports uh, podcast. Uh, I'm waiting for the invite. Uh, I should have it. Well, like the Masters, isn't I it? You win mine. once and you get an invite for life? Apparently not, because I got invited. So my guess is they don't want you in the poll because you know what you're doing. They see me I as guess. the pigeon. And by the way, 67% <laughs> of respondents are saying, no, they will not fill out a March Madness bracket. So that's about as much time as we're going to spend on it. This is uh, the time of year where Canadian men pretend they've been watching college basketball all year. Uh, they have not. As a matter of fact, Women's hockey, the PWHL games were on Valley Sports Florida here. I was watching it. I'm like, I'd rather watch this, I think, than college basketball. Don't at me. The hockey was that good, and I don't really understand what's going on. Maybe when they get down to the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four. Yeah, not now. But it does go fast. <laughs> what I do, and again, America, did you win or did you lose? You lose, you go. There ain't no come back and win in the page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games. You lose, they throw you overboard. I respect the hell out of that. Point four, the Chicago Bears traded quarterback Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers on the weekend for a 2025 six-round draft pick that could potentially become a fourth rounder this year in return. Listen to this again. The Chicago Bears traded Justin Fields. To be honest, I listened to this and thought, in a lot of ways, oh my God, the whole world has not necessarily gone crazy. And I'm reading the wire copy, the story that goes along with this. The move is a strong signal the Bears will draft a quarterback, perhaps USC's Caleb Williams, with the number one overall pick in the draft. Justin Fields figures to back up Russell Wilson, who signed a one-year deal with the Steelers on Friday. There's a lot to get into here. Number one, why I said the whole world hasn't gone nuts is number one, the Bears said they were going to make a decision on this. They said, we owe it to Justin Fields to make a decision prior to the draft, and then they did it. How many times, Darren, do I talk about the gobbledygook and BS, and you can't believe anything you hear, and then they went and did it? That's pretty cool. Number two, I thought this was just a bad team scapegoating another quarterback. I would say any player, but no, it's a quarterback being scapegoated. Like I feel's happened to Baker Mayfield and like what I feel's happening with Bryce Young. But that's not it. I was digging a little more in. I got a really good friend here who's a Bears fan. His name's Ethan. I haven't texted him yet, but I will. Original Chicago guy. But what I, and see if he agrees with this. What, Darren, if you go back and look what Justin Fields when he was drafted three years ago, 
it was a total different regime in Chicago. Now it's a new GM, it's a new head coach. Matt Nagy was the coach when they drafted him. He's long gone. This Justin Fields isn't their guy. That explains a lot, doesn't it? It explains a ton. If he's not your guy, then can you really be confident about your team, especially when you have the number one pick in the draft and an opportunity to really grab your next quarterback? The one thing about you know, the draft is, you, is it's always unknowns. Even Caleb Williams, as much of a surefire number one pick as you'll see, still isn't a sure thing in the National Football League, but they're willing to take their chance because they think he fits. They went out and got Keenan Allen from the, from the L.A. Chargers as another weapon to go with D.J. Moore. And now with Caleb Williams coming in, you know, as the quarterback, they've mm -hmm. got Swift, the running back from Philadelphia, in the backfield now. They're starting to get some weapons for him. So it's great. And for Justin Fields, he moves into a no-pressure situation in, Seattle, or in uh, Pittsburgh with the Steelers where he's not necessarily the guy. He'll be behind Russell Wilson, but you know you're probably going to get an opportunity to play with a good defense and a good coach and a stable ownership. I think it's a great situation, and maybe both teams are going to win in this situation, which I think can happen. Yeah, and this is just the fun part of kibitzing here. It's what we do every day. The fans don't see it this way, and it takes me a long time to kind of sit back and peel the curtains back and realize what it is your favorite team who is that running the show like i see mike madano with the trophy being unveiled saturday night in dallas and because my dad worked for the stars for 26 years not only does our family feel an affinity to mike madano you know some uh, most of my family still loves the dallas stars i don't like literally everybody that was there when my dad was there or madano is gone everybody and Jim Neal came in as the general manager and cleaned everybody out. And he won GM of the year last year in Dallas. That's not to say that Jim Neal did anything wrong. But all those guys are gone. The Craig Buttons, the Les Jacksons, the Doug Armstrongs who we saw here Saturday night, they're all gone. It's different. I'll relate it to me. It's a friggin' miracle that I lasted as long as I did with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. When you consider what a kamikaze I was, A, and B, when I was hired and the football people did have a say into who the broadcaster was, think about this, everybody. The head coach was Cal Murphy and the general manager was Alan Ford. Hello? It was the 90s. I survived the Roy Shivers and Danny Barrett era and the Eric Tillman and Ken Austin era and the Brendan Tamman and Corey Chamberlain era, the Ken Miller era, the Chris Jones era. It wasn't until the O'Day era and those guys that I got smoked. There was like five regimes I went through. Granted, it's just the radio guy. But do you see what I'm saying? The people that hired you usually aren't the ones that are firing you. And that's kind of what's happened with Justin Fields, but it happened within a few-year window. And Zig Fricasi will join us a little later. Well, actually, next segment to talk about that. And I'm not totally done on the football thing. <laughs> Darren in Utah. Utah Darren says the Chicago Bears, where quarterbacks go to die. Yep. Allie in Texarkana writes in. She says, happy Monday, RPN squad. Jeff the Stamps fan says, go Gonzaga. Ryan in Saratoga, New York, says, I've barely paid attention to NCAA college basketball this year, but I'll be filling out a bracket. It's tradition. Hey, we will too. And Darren, I'm sure they will get a hold of you, but they didn't even write you last year, did they? Like, you literally, you win it and you're out, is the sense that I got. I know. That pool. I know. But I'll, you know what? I'll get in. I, th I think I, I, got, I ended up getting the invite at the last minute last year. So uh, I, I'm sure the boys will, will put me in. But either way, we'll fill out a bracket and have some fun. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says the Barrett Shivers era was strange, even for the Rough Riders. Yeah, so... Fun talk there. But actually, I'm not done on the football thing yet. Uh, the NFL thing. Look at what the Steelers have done. And we'll be talking a heck of a lot more about this with Zig Fracassi. Next segment. But they just wiped out their quarterback room. Wiped him out. Can anybody else tell me, while well, the Leafs do that with goalies pretty much every year, but in football, to wipe out the most important position, Mason Rudolph. Bye-bye. Kenny Pickett, bye-bye. Who was the third? Went to the Bills. Mitch Trubisky, bye-bye. That takes a lot of balls.
Doesn't it? From an organizational standpoint? It does. Takes a ton. But, you know, it's a great way to, to show your team that we want to be better. And this is a fresh start on offense. And it's a reason to come to training camp excited, you know, that we're going to have some players here. And to change and shift your culture offensively from a team that was relying on their defense to win them games. And they got into the playoffs last year. Now imagine upgrading that position that was such a big disappointment for them. They're a team that might be able to take big strides forward if they get just decent quarterback play out of the room that's going to include Russell Wilson and Justin Fields and somebody else. So I think there's a tremendous amount of excitement, but you're right. It's not easy. I don't know that we can recall teams really blowing up that whole um, position group all at once. Well, and the interesting thing, too, is that that's a Steelers team. I, I love how the media and the Steelers themselves try to dance around how to explain the Mike Tomlin era. And what they've settled on is he has, he has had, whatever it is, 15 non-losing seasons. Because they've either been 500 or winning record the whole time. They have missed the playoffs, I believe, but they've never had a losing season. And that's the way I would say. Say he's never had a losing series, season. Period. He's had 15 consecutive non-losing seasons. There's a difference in the way that you say it. Trevor Red Deer writes in, yeah, he's never had a losing season. Can we say this? Trevor and Red Deer writes in, says, good morning, gentlemen. Happy Monday. Looking forward to another great show. I'm an everyday watcher. Thanks for all of the great sports talk. Signed. Trevor from Red Deer, Alberta. I'll see you in hour two, Moose. What do you say? Sounds good. Our good pal, Zig Fricasi, coming up next. If you have NFL questions, fire him my way now. He's from Sirius XM NFL Radio. Zig Fricasi coming up right after this break on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. If it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Foreigner, live in Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner, with special guest, Headpins. Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. 
And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Hey, everybody. A friendly reminder that when we talk hockey, it's brought to you by Common Crown Brewing Company out of Calgary, turning your everyday common beer into you a unique and exceptional experience. Visit commoncrown.ca. And we're going to open with hockey with our good friend Zig Fricasi. He probably didn't expect this, but he can handle it. He's a radio vet and a Bruins fan. And Ziggy, start spreading the news. Your Bruins are number one overall in the National League. How's it feel, brother? I don't know if I'm cursed or hexed. I mean, you know, because we saw what happened last year, Rod. But I got to tell you something. Uh, for all their travails, the trials and tribulations, the fact that they are number one again... Uh, says a lot about the perseverance, about uh, the additions Don Sweeney's made, about the goaltending, and largely the uh, a decent enough defense, but still there's gaps. There's still things to be concerned about, but it's pretty amazing what they've gone through to be number one again at this point. Says a lot about that organization. Legitimate Stanley Cup contenders for sure. For whatever reason, they're not getting their due, and I think they're happy with that because they got their butts kissed uh, summarily last year, and we all saw what happened. You know, Zig, I'm going to start here. You probably talk about the Cowboys more than any other team in the National Football League. It's your favorite team and mine. I see my football buddies in Texas are turning in their Cowboys cards and saying, we're done. We're not cheering for them anymore. We're, we're auditioning new teams to cheer for Cowboys fans. Can you explain what they did or didn't do in free agency? Well, the clear thing is, Rod, you go back to what Jerry Jones said about being all in, okay? And I think the hot take media and maybe the long-term fans thought they're going to spend like it's 1999 all over again. The fact of the matter is they haven't spent on a big-name free agent since Brandon Carr back in late 2000s, early 2010s. I mean, there was a stretch, Rod. It was at five years, $50 million. Like, there was a stretch. He had two or one interception over a three-year span. A hell of a player, but he ain't Dion or Night Train Lane. He wasn't making the impact play. So I think since then, they've decided to take a more measured approach. So I think people misinterpreted Jarrah, as I like to say, Jarrah, in, uh, in terms of that. So they misinterpreted that they're going to be all in. What he actually said was in terms of all in, Dak, who seems to be in the news a lot lately and doesn't seem pretty good at this point, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons, those are your franchise guys that he is, quote, all in on. So the Cowboys are going to be a team that's going to try to draft well, and then once they do have their stars, and they've been noted for this, to lock them in to long-term deals. Now, I can understand other team, other people wanting to, you know, get on the Texans bandwagon all of a sudden because this is a team that seems to be being aggressive, exciting rookie quarterback last year, won their division, won a playoff game. It seems like they're more urgent to do things. And there's other teams that look busy which is why I think Cowboys fans, and again, Rod, you and I both know this has been nearly 30 years now since they've seen the Lombardi Trophy. There seems to be sort of a, 
era of entitled and complacent behavior with Jerry and Steven. And, and not just to wrap this thought up, too, here's another thing to consider. They say they want to keep the Cowboys competitive and this and that. Let's also not forget they have the Legends Hospitality, which is in the L.A. Stadium, which is in the Vegas Stadium, which I think is going to be in the Buffalo Stadium. Where I'm going with this is makes you wonder, you know, yeah, the football owning a team, the $9 billion Cowboys is nice, but are priorities in that or are we wanting to maximize potential with other teams' revenues coming in from those stadium deals that they have. So just something I think to keep an eye on. Just like the Fenway group with, that owns the Red Sox and the, and the Pittsburgh Penguins, where are the full resources going for those teams? Yeah. Is it more important to make money or win championships? I think we know the answer to them right. the way it looks. Justin Fields traded from Chicago. If you were the Bears and you had the number one overall pick, is it a slam dunk that you're taking Caleb Williams, the Bears, or will he take one of the other three that are rated in the first round, do you think? Very good question. Uh, and I know Ryan Leaf, my uh, colleague at Sirius XM NFL Radio, second overall pick of the 98 draft, um, you know, and has gone through a lot. And he's a champion if you – if you uh, follow him and what he's gone through and how he's overcome. But anyway, the point being on that rod is he thought that the, he could, if, if it was him to do it all over again, do you hold Caleb Williams? Does he hold the bears? I hate to use the term hostage, but like, all right, well, if this needs to happen or that needs to happen for me to want to go there. So I think now, obviously you don't have a quarterback there of note with the Chicago bears. So I think they're, you know, almost between a rock and a hard place. I, I got to think they're going to take him number one overall. Uh, although that was interesting. I, I still would have done it where I would have kept him, uh, Fields, and Caleb Williams to create that competition. But again, that's just me. And, you know, they didn't get a whole lot for him. What was it, a sixth-round pick that could be a fourth based on playing yeah. time? And I heard you and Darren talk earlier. I, I agree. I think the, the Steelers did a, a, a cost-effective thing, Rod, Think about this. Your top two quarterbacks for 2024 combined under $5 million. That's not a bad way to go. <laughs> not at all. Who do you expect is in the – who do you think is in the best position? We've got about three minutes left here at the most. Uh, Kirk Cousins in Atlanta, Russell Wilson in Pittsburgh, now Justin Fields in Pittsburgh, or any one of these quarterbacks that have switched teams. Who went to the best spot? Great question. Um – well, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to be curious to see what happens like with Mason Rudolph in Tennessee because I thought uh, his last couple of games with Pittsburgh last year, he, was, he wasn't superstar, but he wasn't bad either. I thought he did a nice job managing things. I don't know if he gets on the field there, but you got to think with Cousins in Atlanta, first of all, his wife's from Georgia. So as long as the missus is happy and the family's happy, that's very important. Uh, you've already got a star receiver there, I believe, in Drake London. Uh, Kyle Pitts has been badly underutilized the last couple of years. If they find his form, look out. You've already got a dominant runner in B. John Robinson, and the offensive line on paper, Rod, looks to be good. But here's something Alex Marvez and I were discussing on the show yesterday. You got the new offensive coordinator, Robinson, coming in with his scheme. Does that personnel fit the scheme? And uh, that kind of thing. So that's going to be something worth watching. But I think Cousins in, in a bad division, very winnable division, and if he's totally healthy, that looks like a good mix for him and the Atlanta Falcons. And interesting, too, Arthur Smith's gone to Pittsburgh, right? So he's going to be dealing with Russell Wilson up there. You talk about underutilized talents and a guy that's been criticized. Uh, oh, man, I can't believe it's so far away from the season. But it's fun to talk about now. Zig, you always brighten my day. You know that. I appreciate it, man. And I can't wait till we do it again. Hey, I'm waiting for that invite to the CFL uh, Grey Cup this year, Peterson. Dime on you over here. So <laughs> I'll be in Vancouver. If you want to stay in the RV, we got a spot for you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Zig. All right, buddy. Take care. Uh, 
Zig Fricasi from Sirius XM NFL Radio. We don't actually have an RV lined up, but I feel like if we did, Zig would be welcome. We'll be right back with a sports update and viewer takeover after this on Game Plus TV, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Text 902-518-3033. 902-518-3033. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Text 902-518-3033. capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rod. Hey, everybody. Uh, plenty of time for you to get your comments in here in Viewer Takeover. And we got a sports update coming up, too. Greg in Calgary writes in. A lot of Calgary viewers today on a Flames game day. Greg says regarding March Madness, he says, yes, I agree. The single knockout makes it fun. I thought about that after I said it, just to cl just to go further on that. We've all curled in those bond spiels. You lose, you go to the B event. You lose, you go to the C event. No, there's no B and C event in March Madness. You lose, you're out. We call that single knockout, and that makes it very exciting. Thank you, Greg, for agreeing. 
Um, here's what we have on the sports update. Already the best in the world, Scotty Scheffler added another layer to his legend Sunday. He became the first player to win back to back in 50 years of the Players' Championship by matching the biggest comeback and the lowest closing round by a winner. It went down Sunday just up the road here in Jacksonville. Scheffler holed out for Eagle from the fourth fairway and had four birdies in a five hole stretch around the turn, sending him to an eight under 64 and a one shot victory that wasn't decided until the final putt. So there was some excitement yesterday. NBC had it, believe it or not, I tuned it in because I wanted to see how this thing was going down. The Calgary Flames, as mentioned earlier, host the Washington Capitals in one of two games in the National Hockey League tonight. Both teams enter the game on two game win streaks. Flames coming off a 5-2 win over Montreal on Saturday, while Washington scored a 2-1 win in Vancouver. Also tonight, the Buffalo Sabres visit the Seattle Kraken. Rachel Holman's undefeated Team Canada ring takes on Marianne Rorvik's Norway squad at the World Women's Curling Championship in Sydney, Nova Scotia. This sports update is brought to you by Common Crown Brewing Company out of Southern Alberta, turning your everyday common beer into a unique and exceptional experience. Visit commoncrown.ca. They're at 28th Street Northeast in Calgary, just down the street from overtime hockey lanes, if you can believe. And coming to theaters Friday, March 22nd, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. In Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, the Spengler family returns to where it all started the iconic New York City firehouse to team up with the original Ghostbusters who have developed a top secret research lab to take busting ghosts to the next level starring Paul Rudd, Annie Potts, Dan Aykroyd and more Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters this weekend. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. Check in the comments as I said get him in now. Ryan in upstate New York regarding Grey Cup says, Come on, Zeg, you and me, cross-country road trip to Van City. I'll tell you something, people are getting quite excited about that Grey Cup in Vancouver, Vancouver if they're already talking about it. That's next November, the Canadian Football League Championship. Um, how did we get on the topic of the Steelers? Was it, was it me? Or Zig. Robert watching in Las Vegas. Hey, Robert. He says, incredible, the Pittsburgh Steelers have had only three coaches since 1969. Noel, Cowher, and Tomlin. And Utah Darren says the Steelers love stability. You betcha. And yet, not at the quarterback position. Last minute of play. In hour one, Carlos in Indianapolis regarding the non-losing seasons, as they like to say in Pittsburgh, under Mike Tomlin. Carlos says plenty of nine and seven, nine and eight seasons in that, and some 500 seasons there too. They're not saying anything wrong when they say never had a losing season. Period. It's not easy to do, and that's why he's been there so long. Um, oh, Allie in Texarkana says, Rod, did you like the statue? Hang on, we're going to carry that over past the break. John Ohm in Winnipeg. Have a great lunch, John. And Nelson, we'll get to your comment, too, after this brief pause here on Game Plus and Key Radio. At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. 
And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's life. Work. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. If it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Text 902-518-3033. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. It's like Ravine, the famed illusionist. He would hypnotize the whole crowd. My dad always told this joke. He goes, oh, yeah. Ravine was uh, performing at the center of the arts. He had the whole room hypnotized. And he said, the next thing I say, you will all do. And he got tripped up, tangled in his mic cord and tripped and went, crap. Took him two weeks to get the smell up. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to hour two of your favorite daytime sports talk show. That is what the ratings tell us, that we are your favorite. So thank you. Like the pilot says, we know you have a choice out there. Thanks for choosing us. And we're coming at you live on Game Plus Television and Key Radio down there in Atlanta, where we are Atlanta's NHL show, and don't think I take that lightly. Let's bring the Moose in, and I will tell you, Moose, that uh, I know that we're going to have fun here. Hour two is always, it's always better. Um, hour one, we go through what happened last night, or in this case, the weekend. Joey Votto turned and hit a home run on the very first pitch he saw as a Toronto Blue Jay. Where does this go? We don't know, but it's going to be fun to watch. Number two, NHL weekend leftovers, where we're going to settle in on that here right now, because uh, some questions have come in near the end of hour one I want to get to with you. March Madness is here, but we will not be spending a lot of time on it. Because the poll for our friends at Key Yorkton Kia indicates that not many of you care. 68% say you won't be filling out a bracket. So we'll talk a little bit about it. We will not talk a lot about it. Justin Fields traded by the Chicago Bears. What does that mean for the number one overall pick? Uh, that's exciting. Who, who, uh, I.e., who are the Bears going to take at number one? Uh, Raptors, did I mention they've lost seven in a row? They're officially the Crafters. So we covered all of that stuff. And I'll, I, did Serena get a hold of you? Because she said she was trying. She said she messaged you. Okay. 
I you did. I message, did obviously. see a message. No, I did see a message. She was talking about you being hydrated, dehydrated during our opening segment. She came stomping out here and said, why don't you ask me about dehydration? And I said, well, who asks their partner? Nobody. It's not fun. And I'm really <laughs> seriously starting to think that I am dehydrated. As far as, <clears throat> pardon me, I had a granola bar in the break and I shouldn't have done that. Just being dehydrated and a little loopy. That's all. I'm not about to suffer kidney or brain damage here, I don't, I don't think. But I, I will say this, dear. This is what's new. This is my third year here. And me running on the treadmill, we're at a new gym, Johnny O's. And I want to tell you, I'll bring you next time you come. Which, incidentally, it's been almost a year since you were here. Yeah. Believe it or not, it was last April. But they have a new treadmill. It's called Big Fred. And I'm a big guy. I'm 6'3". I'm not that thick. But I'm gangly and tall. And the thing is the size of like a flatbed semi-trailer. You know, it supports a big guy like me. So I get on that thing, and I just run like the dickens. Problem is, it's hot now, and I sweat, and I sweat to the point that it's like I jumped in the pool with my gear. And just recently, now that it's got hot, I'm like, ooh, 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 spending the rest of the day loopy. I'm like, that can't be right. I got to figure this out. Uh, Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, buy some electrolytes at a drugstore, not Gatorade. Thank you. And he says, is that a Yeti? No, it's not. These are, I think they call these the Stanley Cup or something. I was going to say, is it a this Stanley? Because the Yetis are gone. They're out. It's all about the Stanley now is what social media tells me. That's what I think this one is. And uh, somebody gave it to Serena and I took it. I was that guy. I do have a Yeti <laughs> and it's from the Grey Cup last year. Uh, but I'm not using it today. So, hockey first. And then we'll delve into football, and Joe Madden will be with us later this hour from Sports Grid TV to talk about whatever she okay. wants to talk about. But Allie and Texarkana, it rare is the day that we would have a topic that we would all jive on. But today's that day with Mike Medano having a trophy, uh, sorry, a statue unveiled in his likeness outside, likeness outside America Airlines Arena Saturday night. I watched the ceremony. I went in and read the articles, and for those that don't know, Allie's the Stars fan, and I've mentioned it 800 million times. My dad worked for the Stars for 26 years. So while Mike Badano was my all-time favorite NHL player, I don't care that he's from USA. Never did. Don't care about that stuff. He's my favorite player. I don't see nationality. I don't see color. I don't see any of that. I know he's damn good. Actually, the best. Best skater I've ever seen. And I don't know if you saw the statue, but from what I saw, it's got little tinges of green in it, which you don't see color in bronze statues very often, do you? You don't. No, you don't. At all. You never so see you know, color yeah, in the she, statues. Yeah. She specifically asked me what I thought of it. So I thought it was great. And if you read my 10 things column, I'm sorry to trip you up there and leave you hanging, Darren. But I'll ask you, what are some of the coolest statues you've seen? I put it in my 10 weekend things column, and people really like the column. I've seen Bobby Orr in Boston, Dan Marino here, obviously Don Shula here in Miami out front of the Dolphins Stadium. I've been to Cowboys Stadium, Tom Landry, America's coach standing in front. He was the coach with the Fedora of the Cowboys. L.A., you were with me. We've seen, uh, well, the Kobe one just got unveiled, right? Gretzky, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Chick Hearn, the broadcaster, has a statue in front of his, the stadium there. My good friend, Mighty L. Mike, sent me a photo of his wife, Joe, in front of United Center, in front of Stan Makita and Bobby Holt statues. What are you laughing at? I think, you know, it's funny, and... When you, whenever you say Chick Hearn, I think of the Winning Time series, and he talks about giving his color commentator the fist. <laughs> Means to shut up right. when I give you the fist. <laughs> um, I was with Broad, you in L.A. Broad, L.A. is Brian probably the coolest. That. It's probably the yep. coolest L.A. Gordie Howe statue in Saskatoon is pretty cool. Um, obviously, I was just down yesterday taking some people around downtown. We uh, you know, went to the statues outside of Scotiabank, the Leaf Great statues. Those are good. Montreal, we were there for the Stanley Cup, and they've got 
wonderful displays and memorabilia and statues and all the rest outside of the Bell Center. Um, but I would say L.A. was my favorite, just the collection there, different sports. Bell Center in Montreal have an army of statues in front for the Montreal Canon gang. It's really cool. Uh, Allie says, uh, she says, I loved it. The jersey flapping was choice because Mike Medano, he skated so fast that his jersey would literally flap. Sort of like Guy Lafleur's hair. It was Medano. Uh, Ma well, Americans say Madano, and Canadians say Madano. And my guess is, because Mike is American, we were probably saying it wrong forever. <laughs> Just to be honest. And he is such a shy, humble, demure type guy. He was probably too shy to correct anybody. Um, it's Madano. But, Ali, go to rodpeterson.com, read my 10 weekend things column, and you, all my thoughts on Madano's legacy, his history, how him and my dad's careers were intertwined because before either one of them got to the NHL, they both started in PA. And Mike Madan, Prince Albert, can't spell party without PA or paradise. <laughs> but Madano showed up there in the summer of 1986, mouth full of braces, spiked hair, mullet, and just took the league by storm. And then he took the NHL by storm. He's my greatest hockey player ever, my favorite hockey player ever, Michael Madano. Randy in Winnipeg says, Bobby Orr flying through the air statue is cool. Utah Darren says, uh, the Orr statue in Boston's cool. They have Stockton and Malone at the Delta Center. Pretty good likeness for each. Nelson, our VP of Sim Events, says the massive statues inside the entrance to the Hockey Hall of Fame are outstanding. You were just there. I can't remember what statues they have there. But it, I don't remember. Well, at the bottom, I think I, I want to say there's a Gordie Howe statue. That's the big one outside the front of the Hall of Fame. Um, and that's the only one I can recall off the top of my head. That's sitting, you know, right out front the, of the main doors. Um, yeah, I think that's it. But, but it is very cool. Very cool. Uh, well, I, I mentioned in the column all the statues that I've seen, and I just kind of get a kick out of the Gordy Howe one, the Gordon Howe one in Saskatoon. They moved it. They literally moved it to in front of now Sastel Center, the home of the Blades. But where was it before? Was it not downtown? And how do you move a statue? Forklift, front end loader, John Deere. I would have liked to have been around Something. that day just to watch, just to watch those guys. <laughs> I know. Anyways, yeah, so that's more than I wanted to go on the statue other than Allie asked. So there you go. I'm in favor of it, which is another thing. <laughs> it looks like Madano. It's actually amazing how much they do a great job. Technology now, right? Did some guy actually chisel it? Probably not. You know what I mean? But it looked exactly like Madano. I'll, I'll never forget if Joe Lazito is watching in New York. He'll get this one. He's such a big Clark Gillies fan. When we had a Clark Gillies bobblehead night with the Regina Pats, we sent Clark a bobblehead ahead of time. I don't know why. But he got it, <laughs> opened it, and he's like, who's this? And his daughter grabbed it and goes, hey, Dad, this is what they think you look like. Like, bobbleheads very rarely really look like the guy. I almost feel like they have a catalog and they just pick out a guy, eh. Which is a, which is a wholly another thing. Which is another thing. I was sitting with a kid at the Panthers, before the Panthers game the other night. Danny. And I was roasting him. And I kind of felt bad. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, Danny, that I'm roasting you. It's, he's like 13. And I said, I'm only doing it because I love you. And he goes, well, that's what hockey players do. I'm like, yes, 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 you get it. Danny gets it. Because in Regina, we had Eberly bobbleheads while he was still playing for the team. And, of course, yeah. it shows up. And uh, was it not? Who, I can't remember who it was. One of his teammates, I think it was my memory's gone. I think it was Garrett Mitchell. He's like, we need to block out the, uh, the gap in your teeth. Anybody got a Sharpie? We're like, oh, that's me. Jordan, <laughs> he, he's self-conscious about that. 
But the guys were like, this is not true to likeness. There's no gap in his teeth. Hockey players are merciless. I know. They really are, man. They really are. But, of course, they would want to get the Sharpie out and then do 10,000 of them so everybody got the real Jordan Everly likeness. But, hey, speaking of the gap in the teeth, they got the Michael Strahan statue pretty good, the bust in the Hall of Fame with the gap in the teeth. At least Everly's gap isn't a Strahan gap. <laughs> yes. Uh, which, by the way, people, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move on in a second. But I'm gonna drop a topic here, and you tell me what you think about it. Danny and I were talking about spitting chiclets, and I, again, he's 13. Okay, I mean, kids are a lot more mature at 13 than we were at 13, but he's still 13, still a minor, can't drive, can't drink. You know what I mean? Still, I think thinks it's to pee with, you know. And I brought up. Spitting chiclets. And he was like, he was like, oh, yeah, the last episode when they had Sam Reinhardt on there and they were talking about going to strip clubs in Vegas. I'm like, I don't get it. I listened to one episode, one, and it was so raunchy and wildly inappropriate. I mean, I got a talking to for, for, for the nickname for my van a couple of weeks ago. And I understand <laughs> spitting chiclets is not on national television. I, I get it. But I'm like, how is this in any way? I get why it's popular. How is it endorsed to the degree that it is by the National Hockey League with how wildly inappropriate it is? And I, I, I don't even know why I'm asking you because I don't think you have the answer. And I apologize for that if you feel I'm putting you on the spot because I might be. I know. <laughs> My question is, how is this 13-year-old kid listening to Spit and Chicklets? Because clearly it's a little mature for a 13-year-old kid to be uh, consuming on a daily it's basis. Not the kids but you know fault. what? It's not 1987. It's not I know. You know, a lot easier to get your hands on this stuff now than it was back in the day. But, um, you know, I don't think they hide it. When you talk about being in endorsing it, I don't think they hide it. I don't think they... They make no you know, bones about it. They're not sitting there trying to say that they're PG-13 or rated G or meant for the Disney Channel. They say right up front, explicit content and uh, <laughs> mature audiences only. Okay, fair. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't think Spitting Chicklets is doing anything wrong. I'm just saying I don't get how the NHL endorses it to the degree that they do. I guess Vegas yesterday had a clip during or before the game of Ryan Whitney on the big screen. So, yeah, you're right. They're not hiding from anything about there. How did we find the Playboys back in the day? We just did. Whose fault is it? It's the way that it is. Yeah. Right? Uh, 100%. On the topic of, of statues, Ryan in upstate New York says, Martha and Brothers statue in front of the Prudential Center in Newark is rather well done. That's what I'm saying. They, they, there's not a lot of bad ones out there. I will say the two in front of the uh, Mosaic Stadium in Saskatchewan don't look a whole heck of a lot like Ron and George, but they have helmets on. So there's that, you know. Okay, when we come back, we'll play our uh, breakaway bets for tonight's NHL games, and we'll get into the football talk. And actually more of what the audience wants to talk about, because that's what's fun about Hour 2. Joe Madden on the way. We are live on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live.
The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. <laughs> We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's life line. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Sports talk coming your way here on Game Plus TV and Key Radio. And by the way, here's a reminder to reward yourself for your love of movies. All you got to do is sign up for Landmark Extras for free today. I've got mine. Darren has his. Get more of what you love. Free movies and concession items, invitations to exclusive screenings, special events, and more. What are you waiting for? Get signed up. LandmarkCinemas.com for details. If we can please move the moose in here. And uh, it's interesting, man. One of my friends here in Florida said, is that curling tournament over yet? Can I watch your show again? Which is what it is. What I've learned is not huge curling fans here. And I'm like, well, it's, we are on national Canadian television. It's kind of a big deal. You know, but if you don't like it, that's fine. I said to you, Darren, it's like me getting upset when sports centers interrupted for tennis. You know, when I want to watch it in the morning on the treadmill, I just, I go away, but I always come back. You know, we all, it's not for everybody. Curling is for us. And I guess Rachel Holman's Team Canada is on the ice right now. She's looking to go to 4-0, taking on Norway at the World Women's Hockey uh, Curling Championship, sorry, in Sydney, Nova Scotia. And did I mention the Crafters yet? The visiting Toronto Raptors lost their seventh straight game Sunday, dropping a 111-96 decision to the Orlando Magic. So I have a whole lot of roads to go down here. And I'm probably going to go down the mall. But my first is this. You've lived in Toronto coming up a year. Is it an everyday Raptors town or just when they're winning? Because it's an everyday Blue Jays town. It's an every minute Leafs town. But are they an everyday Raptors town? Have you got a sense for that? No, I feel like a better description would be they're an every other day Raptors town or an every third day Raptors town. 
It does matter when they're winning for sure. When they're winning, it's an everyday Raptor town. I, I, I would think. I haven't been here when they've been winning. Um, but I go around. We were downtown last night. The games were on the TVs, right? The games are always on when I go around. But I don't see people in their gear all the time. I don't feel like this is definitely a Raptors town. I feel like I'm with you. It's a Raptors town when they're winning. And when they're not, it's a little bit like an every other day type of thing. It's not an everyday town. Well, thank you for the answer because I have nothing against Toronto. I just don't understand Toronto. But it's not like Torontonians are any different. Like people need to understand, and all our U.S. viewers that don't know, like Ali, I don't think has ever been to Canada, and I don't think Utah Darren has either. They're not a lot different than Americans. They just see things differently. Like, for, for instance, Toronto's in this vacuum, and they don't really care or realize there's a country outside that gigantic area code. But they're fine with it. It's like Florida here. I've told you, I know a lot of Floridians. A lot of my friends have never left the state. Never. Don't need to. We got the weather. We got the sports. We got all we need. We don't need to leave. You know what I mean? Um, I the thing is, I, I don't feel like New York anchors the rest of America, like Toronto anchors the rest of Canada. Fair? We're always getting the Blue Jays scores. We're always getting the Raptors scores. And God knows we're always getting the Leafs scores. Here, they're not pumping it down your throat with the Yankees did last night or the Rangers did last night or, in, or the Knicks. They're not. And I, I, don't, I don't know if that's a numbers thing or why that necessarily is. That's... That's a bit of a difference. That's a bit of a geographical story that there's no point in spending any more time on. I just wanted to ask you if they're into the Raptors every single day. By the way, pots light. Let's get some comments going here on the text line for Sober Carpenter, 902-518-3033. Sober Carpenter, non-alcoholic craft beers. Ask for them by name at your local beer, wine, and spirit store. Again, 902-518-3033. Uh, just a quick one. Wayne in Victoria, B.C. says, uh, as you Rod Squatters may know, Bobby Orr is my favorite NHL player of all time. And the reason he brings that up for all the new viewers that I see have just logged and tuned in. Um, we're talking about statues. Allie in Texarkana asked my thoughts on Mike Medano, the statue being unveiled Saturday night in Dallas. And I said I loved it. Even had a tinge of green in there. It looks exactly like him. What's not to love? Like that great Lisa Brokup song, What's Not to Love? And it's brought up the, com the comments of everybody's favorite statues or statues they've seen. Bobby Orr lives here. And I'll just tell you one interesting thing, Darren. My guys that are the press box custodians here, Jonah and Eddie, Serena calls them Freddie and Eddie, and everybody thinks that's real funny. They said Bobby Orr used to come to every game, every Panthers game from West Palm, but. Come COVID, he stopped coming and hasn't come back. So the second we see Bobby Orr, we'll be attacking and mauling him in the press box, but we haven't seen him since we got here. Um, Ali says, unfortunately, I haven't been to Canada. Really, really want to go one day. That is a topic for another day. If you were going to tell some American that was a hockey fan like Ali what to do when you come, where would you tell them to go, and what would you tell them to do? But we're not the travel show today. BW in Edmonton says, uh, the GTA doesn't give two bleeps about the rest of the country, especially in politics. Yes, but we know this. Last week around the supper table here with my gang of guys that I meet with every Thursday night, Guy asked me about Trudeau. I gave my thoughts. And then a guy chimed in with his thoughts about Trump. And it was a freaking holy war. A haymakers are coming over the table. Not literal, but figurative haymakers. And what my guy, Mitch, he's like, hey, 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 let's talk about something else. And I'm like, I didn't bring Look, it up. The guy asked me. <laughs> what? What? You talk about that. And it's really, you know, it's really interesting. You know, Toronto doesn't care about the rest of Canada. Well. Western Canada doesn't care about Eastern Canada. And California doesn't care about New York. And New York doesn't care about California. And Winyard doesn't care about Foam Lake. And Saskatoon doesn't really care about Regina. You know, all it does is anger us. And, you know, we, we all have the same mentality. If it's not good for me, 
then screw you. You know, and it's if you're not with me, you're against me. So everybody only cares about themselves in the grand scheme of things. And is that so bad that you want to take care of your own backyard? Right. So what did I say to you? People are the same wherever you go. That's how I started this whole thing. Um, there you go. Jeff, Jeff in York didn't write in. He says, I would say it's a numbers thing. Raptors and Jays are the only Canadian entities in those sports there, so there are a lot of fans spread across the country. Hockey is spread out already. Nelson, our VP of Sim Events, says, it's a media fixation. It's what makes the RP show refreshing. It's not catering to the 16% of Canada that lives in the GTA. There's 84% across the rest of Canada. That's the point. When we used to look at the analytics of this show, way back when we started, our fastest growing region was Ontario. And I, I, the, the guy who said it in our team won't even remember saying it, but I'm not going to name him. But he goes, we need to talk more Leafs. Our numbers are rising in Ontario. And I'm like, no, no, we don't. They're watching us because it's less Leafs. That's why our num they get enough Leafs. That's why our numbers are going up there. Trust me, I know this stuff. And we're still very high in uh, Ontario. And Quebec, too. David, number one, by the way, we will get to our NHL picks for tonight, and Joe Madden is on the way. But David, number one from Winnipeg, says, Moose, I'm coming to Toronto for my birthday, April 12th. What can you recommend I check out? Do they still have a Hooters on Adelaide Street? Because that's what I would Ooh, recommend. good question. Um, there's probably lots to check out on, on, uh, on the 12th. Depends where you are where you're staying, if you really want some recommendations, I, I don't want to open a can of worms here, but you could send me a DM and I could recommend a few spots for you. Okay, there you go. I would say the Hooters on Adelaide Street. Um, okay, so tonight's National Hockey League games, we do it every day. We pick uh, straight up the winners, and there are, there are only two, so this will be easy. Washington Capitals at the Calgary Flames. Both teams are riding two-game win streaks. And as I mentioned earlier in the show and in my weekend column, that's the one thing you see from fans is they want to tell other fans how to be fans, and it kind of just dawned on me. If you want to cheer for the Flames to win, even though it might be better for them to lose in terms of draft positioning, you go ahead. You, whatever makes you feel better. But... If you, if you break it down to this, who needs the win more? Washington will win tonight. What do you think? They definitely need the win more. They're right in the mix and uh, very much capable of, have a, of locking down a playoff spot. But I'm going to take Calgary. Dustin Wolf probably gets the start again Ooh. tonight. Um, he's played pretty good. Um, I like the Flames to keep rolling. Uh, I will still take the Caps. It, what's interesting, Gordy Stellick this morning, Stellectricity on NHL radio, <laughs> said if there was ever more <laughs> accurate things said, I, don't, I haven't heard it on NHL radio, he goes, the Flames aren't in it. They'll tell you they are, but they're not. <laughs> and I'm like, hello! Right? Uh, but hey, I got Washington to win. Darren has Calgary. Let me slip in a comment. Ryan in upstate New York says, this is why I love the RP show. I love getting the perspective of sports fans from my neighbor to the north. That's the whole thing. We do look at it differently, and that 49th parallel might as well be the Berlin Wall. I used to think it was a virtual line. We're all the same. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> Couldn't be more different, but that's okay, too. And then Buffalo is at Seattle. We're still, you know, less than 20 games to go to the end of the regular season. There's teams that, like, has anybody clinched yet, by the way? I don't think, I don't think anybody's actually clinched yet. No, only Chicago and San Jose have been eliminated. That's all that's happened. Right, right. So. I'm just looking to see who's got more to play for tonight. Buffalo with Seattle. Sabres are five points out of a playoff spot. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but Seattle, Seattle's 11 out. So Buffalo conceivably has more to play for, but that didn't change your mind in the Washington Calgary. I will say Buffalo, especially for our gal. Uh, Jenna in Southern California who watches this yeah. show every day and is a Sabres fan. I'll say Sabres, but you? I'm going to say Buffalo as well. They, they're they playing a little bit better over the last dozen games than Seattle is, not by a lot. Um, it's interesting, though. You said, you know, who needs it more? Buffalo's only one point ahead of Seattle. They've got one more point than the Kraken do, yet Buffalo's five points out of a playoff spot in the East, and Seattle's 11 points out in the West. Shows you how big the gap is a little bit right now. Buffalo uh, and Seattle's lost four in a row. So I think Seattle's struggling and Buffalo wins tonight. Good way to end this here before we move you out and bring in Joe Madden. Bill Dalby is watching in Brantford, Ontario, the home of Wayne Gretzky. And he says the Sabres have statues of the French connection line outside their rink. Perrault, Martin, and Rene Robert. Looks good. That's from Bill. And Bob in Saskatoon writes in. He says, Gordie Howe's statue was at 20th Street and 1st Avenue beside a freeway on-ramp and parking lot. Just like the Sastel Center, they put things in the wrong locations. How about well, that? Well, at least they were able to pick up the, at least they were able to pick up the Gordie statue and move it. <laughs> they are unable to do that with the Sastel Center. Last I looked. <laughs> okay, Moose, thanks. Man, this has been fun and very fast today. Always. You have a great have tomorrow a good one. day. Okay. Joe Madden coming in next from Sports Grid uh, TV. It's been far too long since we chatted with her. We're live on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. <laughs> We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience.
Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Oh, yeah. He's back. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Our Pete Show continues, and when we talk hockey, it's for Common Crown Brewing Company, as you probably know, turning your everyday common beer into a unique and exceptional experience. Visit Common Crown dot ca and we're going to talk some hockey here and probably some nfl too as a matter of fact i think i'm going to open with the national football league with joe madden from sports grid tv she actually when you're making your picks joe i love you're like mostly stone-faced no emotion but when it comes to the los angeles chargers you let it crack a little and you weren't happy with uh, some free agent moves of your favorite nfl team are you over it how are you feeling about the i'm, I'm not over it point of the Okay. I'm not Can you over talk it. about it? Yeah, this is worse than any breakup I've ever gone through. We lost Keenan Allen. I still can't get over the fact that Keenan Allen is no longer with the LA Chargers. Being traded off to the Bears for a draft pick, it blows my mind. Now, I don't blame him at all. So he got traded off because he wouldn't restructure his contract because of the salary cap. That all makes sense. I don't blame him. He's coming off a fantastic season, but I don't know. They should have paid him. They really should have. Who is Justin Herbert going to throw to out there? I know the target is Caleb Williams, right? We're going to have that target, trying to get a really solid wide receiver out there. But Jim Harborough coming in, clearing house, Keenan Allen was not one of the players I expected. Mike Williams, okay, right? Austin Eckler, okay, it hurt. But Keenan Allen, yeah, it was heartbreak, complete heartbreak out there. Yeah, well, this is exactly, I think, why the Bears are moving out Justin Fields. He's not the guy of the regime. And with Harbaugh, uh, let me ask you, I know we're going to talk about betting and stuff, but I want to talk about you being a fan. Did you like him being hired, A, and B, what other kinds of moves do you think he's going to pull off here before kickoff? I don't know where he's going. He's being erratic in my opinion and a good erratic I guess because I know he's building for the future he is gutting this team it's going to be a young team Chargers have always dealt with those injuries so I understand that but there was that moment when he let Keenan Allen walk out that door that I was like we bring back Brandon Staley it's like one of those relationships that you're like okay we knew what we were going to get with Brandon Staley he wasn't going to change things up but I do think for the Chargers the future is going to be bright under Harborough. The problem is it's just going to be painful watching it come. Now, I do think he's going to go big in the draft here. I think he's going to give Justin Herbert a lot of weapons. If he turns to going after running backs and turns this into a run game, then trade off Justin Herbert. Give Justin Herbert the ability because I'm tired of seeing quarterbacks for the Chargers not be able to have um, strong offensive lines. They're not able to have that time in the pocket and a run game here. While Justin Herbert has such a fantastic arm, he can get that ball down into those tight windows. So I don't want to see this turn into a run game. I love him. I love what we saw out of him at Michigan. And it was painful for me because I'm also a Buckeyes fan. So it was painful to watch him at Michigan have so much success. I do think he is an elite coach and I do think he has a vision and I do think it's gonna be the right path for the Chargers. The sad thing is it's gonna be with none of the players that I think are on the team or were on the team 
as of last season. This team is going to be completely revamped. Joey Bosa signed to that one year deal. He's going to be gone after that. It's just, it's, it's hard. It's hard to watch, but new things, well, new life for the Chargers, and they should be able to get there. Uh, Joe Madden appears on Sports Grid the TV follower at Joe Madden Sports, and all the links are there. So you're seeing, like I'm seeing, all the fans openly crying on social media yeah. through free agency. Now you're one of them. And so I'll just ask you this before we switch to the hockey. How do you feel like the six biggest spenders in free agency in, a year ago in the NFL, none of them made the playoffs? Do you think the big spenders this year will make that? playoff trip like the Falcons for instance like which move did you like the most I guess Russell Wilson went cheap to Pittsburgh and Justin Fields they got cheap so spending isn't really it yeah. but which move do you like the most here in free agency I think the Atlanta Falcons are absolutely stacked. Now, I look at this team and you've got Bijan Robinson in the backfield. You got Kirk Cousins out there. I think they have every ability to make a really a deep run. And I actually, there's a couple of bets that you can already make on Bijan Robinson that I think you should look at. The Atlanta Falcons to take their division, I do think, is so solid with this team. So I love the moves that they've been able to make. I also love what the Green Bay Packers are doing as well. Now, I know they sold off a couple of their really key offensive weapons. But you look at bringing in Josh Jacobs. They took care of the safety situation as well. So I think the Packers, another team that should be able to go deep. I don't like the moves by the Steelers. I don't understand bringing Russ in. I think Russ had his fantastic years with Seattle. Going over to Denver, Sean Payton and him didn't work. I don't know how he will do with Mike Tomlin. I'm already looking for that Steelers win total to come out and go to the under. I really do think the Steelers, they're not going to be that improved. And I know he's better than Kenny Pickett, but Russ didn't have success in Denver. And I think he brings that attitude in that I wouldn't be wanting if I was Tomlin. So that's a big question mark for me. Justin Fields being traded away from the Bears. Okay. I'm worried for Justin Fields. I wanted to see him go to a coach that was not defensive minded, offensive minded. And I do think he will do nicely for the Steelers, but I wanted to see him with an offensive coach. I would have loved to see him go to Miami. Miami got a bridge quarterback in Sam Darnold. There's been so many moves, Rod. It's absolutely crazy <laughs> what is happening out there. But I'm then you look at Houston. They made another big move on their defense. That defense is going to be so elite this season. The um, fans are saying it's hard to keep up, and no doubt, uh, for sure it is. I'm going to ask or ask you a few viewer questions, if you don't mind. They're quick. It, like, March Madness is Christmas, I would think, in the betting world. BW in Edmonton wants to know, says, Morning, Joe, any teams I should keep a lookout for? My Madness bracket? You know all the sports. Uh, yes. Joe, how much are you following March Madness? Oh, so much. It's UConn and Houston for me. I think both of those teams have every ability to go so deep in March Madness. It's going to be absolutely crazy. I love Houston and their defense. And I know Houston lost that last game, but they needed to have a loss. They couldn't keep rolling so phenomenally hot. They weren't out there to get the win. And then you look at UConn, that team is so completely stacked. I can't see them not getting the repeat. David, number one, because there's three that from Winnipeg that write in. David, number yeah. one from Winnipeg, says, question for the beautiful Joe Madden. With the Winnipeg Jets lately not playing their best against playoff teams and winning against non-playoff teams, are they frauds, even being tied for first in the Central? No, they're absolutely not frauds. I love what we've seen out of the Winnipeg Jets. Adding Tyler Toffoli with them, it's going to take a little bit of time to get that chemistry underway. Um, but I do think as soon as they start finding that chemistry offensively, we know what this defense is able to do. And I have the faith in Connor Hellebuck in net. So, and then Boussois, the backup for him. He's just as phenomenal. So I think this team has every opportunity to make a huge run for the cup. They are my favorite uh, in Canada to be able to do so behind the Vancouver Canucks. And the Vancouver Canucks, I've got concerns because of Demko and that injury, and I don't have as much faith in Casey DeSmith. 
Um, Allie in Texarkana writes in, this has nothing to do with sports. She says, Joe has an awesome setup. I love the memorabilia in the background. Allie's a friend of ours, a Dallas Stars fan. Women supporting women. I love it. And I would just be interested to know, what does that memorabilia mean to you? There's always some sort of significance to it. The stuff over your shoulder, what is it for you? There, there's so much um, behind me here, Rod. I think my favorite piece is, I don't know if I've ever told you. So my great, great uncle was a CFL referee and I have part of his jersey or his ref jersey up behind me there. And he helped write the rule book. So that is my favorite piece. I, you can't see it on screen right now, but it's to this side of me up here. Or, the other side. You there can't you see it. It's too high. So it's absolutely phenomenal. So if we don't like the rules, blame him. Uh, exactly. What about the stuff <laughs> over what would be your right shoulder? Yeah, so I have a couple of jerseys. I also have a couple of pictures up there just from, you know, past players signed pictures. This one up here, um, this one, Mike Davis here, signed from, uh, he was a Raiders. So he was a Raiders player. I actually got to really know him well before his passing a couple of years ago. And so he signed that, sent it actually for my son. So it is my son's and I've always told him he can have it, have it in his room, but he won't take it. He wants me to take care of it. But Mike Davis was an absolutely phenomenal player. He was the player that in the game versus the Chicago Bears intercepted the ball. And if you knew anything about Mike Davis, he could not catch a ball to save his life. It was one of the only times he ever picked off a ball that propelled the Raiders uh, to the Super Bowl that year. So it was, uh, yeah, it's meaningful to me. I love it. I love it. So just so I have this right Let's just pick yeah. three teams for a thumbs up in free agency. You gave Falcons and Packers. Who else did you like? Who else would you give a thumbs up to in NFL Houston? free agency? Yeah, I think Houston. the Houston okay. Texans. Thumbs... Huge thumb up. Um, okay, and thumbs down, you gave Pittsburgh. Who else didn't you like? Yeah. Uh, the Cowboys. The Cowboys haven't done much. And yes, um, they've got their uh, long kicker, but. Otherwise, thumbs down for them. I think Minnesota, thumbs down, getting a bridge quarterback with Sam Darnold. But I do think they'll be going after someone. So thumbs down for them. Thumbs up for KC as well. So KC adding a wide receiver. Uh, Hollywood Brown, you definitely needed that. KC needed another person. LA Rams got a thumbs up adding Jimmy G. So because Stafford, you know, you never know how healthy he can stay. Well, thumbs down. Oh, thumbs up for the Philadelphia no, Eagles. Good. They got Saquon Barkley. So many thumbs up. Uh, right? It's the Cowboys. <laughs> Major thumbs down. Needed... Steelers thumbs down. We'll give the Cowboys two thumbs down. And that's my team. Yeah. Okay, Joe, uh, a plug for Sports Grid TV tonight. Where can people watch you? Yeah, absolutely. If you're looking to watch me, just go to www.sportsgrid.com forward slash watch and you can find all of the different platforms that Sports Grid is on. So, thank you guys. And the link is in her bio. You're the busiest gal yeah. in this business. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for fitness and appreciate you. Enjoy the sports. Thanks, Rod. We'll be right back with a sports update and viewer takeover after this. We're live on Game Plus TV. WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Foreigner, live in Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. 
May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner. With special guest, Headpins. Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. this look familiar your fans deserve an incredible arena experience it's time for an upgrade stunning graphics revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology let us help you find the best solution for your facility bdg always delivering the best fan experience Hi, my name is Logan Stankoven. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. <laughs> if it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Okay, everybody, get those questions and comments in because if you can believe, I feel like this is the fastest show we've ever had. This is the last segment, so get them in now. Something you want to get off your chest? Maybe a bouquet you'd like to throw out. 902-518-3033. Sober Carpenter text line. Sober Carpenter non-alcoholic craft beers. Ask for them by name at your local beer, wine, and spirit store. March Madness is here. UConn, Purdue, Houston, and North Carolina get cops, uh, top, speed, uh, top seeding in the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship tournament. Defending champion Connecticut, along with Houston, Purdue, and North Carolina, are the top seeds in a bracket that started going haywire even before the pairings came out last night. Of the four top seeds, only UConn heads into the tournament coming off of a win. Our poll question today is, will you be filling out a March Madness bracket? 68% of you last I saw for Key Yorkton Kia said, no, you won't. But put me in the 32% that say, yes, I will. And I think Moose will, but... He was in a bracket with the Enterprise Sports Show in Philadelphia a few years ago now. He won it, and they've never invited him back. Oh, they'll keep inviting me because they know I have no chance of winning. But Moose, no. He go. The Toronto Blue Jays have the day off following a pair of split squad games in the Grapefruit League action Sunday. Toronto beat Minnesota 9-4 in one game and tied Philadelphia 5-5 in the other. Joey Votto homered against the Phillies in his first at bat as a Jay, but was then pulled from the game after rolling his ankle in the dugout. Jays play Baltimore tomorrow. My goodness, what I would give to hear Tom Cheek, the Hall of Fame retired number broadcaster of the Blue Jays, announce Joey Votto playing for the Blue Jays. I can't even, I can't. 
Here comes Joey Votto. I, will, I won't even try. Shohei Otani may be more than just a designated hitter this season after all. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts says that Otani will soon start a throwing program that might allow him to play in the field this season. Dodgers signed Otani to a $700 million 10-year contract in the offseason. Sports updates brought to you by Landmark Cinemas. In Landmark Cinemas now, an American saga in the great tradition of Warner Brothers Pictures' iconic westerns. Horizon, an American saga, explores the lure of the Old West and how it was won and lost through the blood, sweat, and tears of many. Produced by and starring Kevin Costner. And also brought to you in part by Common Crown Brewing Company, turning your everyday common beer into a unique and exceptional experience. Visit commoncrown.ca. Uh, well, that about wraps up our time. Um, I did enjoy the discussion of the statues today, and I thank Ali and Texar Canada for bringing it up and starting that. And it started with a question of how I felt about the Mike Medano statue unveiling Saturday night in Dallas. As my favorite all-time NHL player, they really got it right. They really did. And more than anything, I'm just happy to see Mike Medano get his due. He played his last game for Dallas in 2010. It was an acrimonious split. It always is. But between that or seeing Ron and Dawn coming together for Dawn's 90th birthday celebration tells you that there is hope for these long-standing feuds. Hey, by the way, think of this. I heard 24, 2024 is the year of karma. That's what I heard. Ron and Don, Mike Medano, certain other people getting bad karma. This might be it. David, number one, says, great show today. Thank you, David, in Winnipeg. Ali says, great show as always. Enjoy the rest of the day. Similar from Ryan in upstate New York. Uh, we really had a good one today. Thanks, Clark, for lining it up. Could you tell me, Clark, real quick, who's tomorrow, or would you rather not? Oh, nice. We got the hockey guys in here tomorrow. Tim Hunter and Shane Knighty. Two uh, dub grads and good friends of mine will be talking NHL Stanley Cup playoff and all the rest. Until then, have a good one, everybody. Be good, as they like to say. See you tomorrow on Game Plus and Key Radio. Who has more fun than us? <laughs>